Hey gamers, it's Luke from GameZone, and I present to you the last two videos in our Monster Hunter Tri series. This video actually covers the bosses in single player campaign with one or two stars in difficulty, while the second guide will cover more intermediate bosses, some of which you'll need to go online in order to stand a chance against. So without further delay, let's kick things off with the Great Joggy. I know what you guys are thinking, this thing looks like a mini T-Rex. For this battle, I would suggest some type of hammer. Now the quest's goals is to wound its head and daze him, so the hammer is excellent for this. The Great Joggy has two main attacks that I've noticed. One he'll try to headbutt you and then wipe his tail at you, and the other move consists of trying to bite you. Watching his pattern closely and dodge or run away when he does either of these moves, as it's very easy to escape him. The best way to do some serious damage to him is when he goes to call for his allies to aid him. As the Joggy is standing in place, smash him in the head as many times as possible. Ouch! If successful, you should be able to daze him. Notice the stars around his head? Once he is stunned and dizzy, continue to attack him as best you can. Don't forget to heal yourself whenever you're able to. Otherwise, if you die, you'll decrease your reward, and that's not a good thing. How you know the creature is getting weaker is it will start to drool or shake its head around. Finally, it's almost dead, and it will limp. For beginners, how you know a monster is about to die is it will go back to its home and fall asleep. Simply follow it to its den and finish it. Sorry, I couldn't resist. Ah yes, that bird pterodactyl thing, or as I call it, bird brain. Did you folks know that playing with fire is one of the most played quests for rookies online? Okay, as long as you memorize the boss's attack pattern, you should be golden in this fight. Attack number one. Big Bird will spit three balls at you. This residue is like gasoline and needs the player to be on fire to be considered a threat. Attack number two. Honestly, this is the bird's most used attack. How you know he's going to use this flint attack is the birdie will smash his claws together three times. This attack has two variations from what I've seen. One, he will chase you in a circle, or the other one, he'll charge at you straight ahead. Beginners can take some serious damage from his flint attack. Still, this move is one of the easier ones to dodge. While Birdbrain is chasing you around, move your character directly behind him. This will put you enough steps ahead of him to make his attack pretty much useless. Attack number three, the beak attack, I think. Be on the lookout for when he expands his chest like a robin. Once he does this, he will either call for help or charge at you in a straight line, hitting you multiple times with his beak. Avoiding this move is easy. All you need to do is sidestep or run at an angle. Actually, now that I think about it, players can dodge most of the bird's attacks by running around in circles. It sounds rather silly, but trust me, somehow it works. Okay, now that you know what to watch out for, it's time to go on the offense. The best opportunity to do some serious hits on Tweety is to attack him while he's calling for backup. If you manage to strike him before he yells, not only are you hurting it, but this monster's buddies can't come to help him. See, the bird isn't that tough, but what makes this fight a nightmare for new players is when he calls a Ludroth or a dragon into the fray. I was like an hour five when I first fought the dragon, and we all died badly. Whoever he calls for backup is completely random, so hope and pray you don't cross paths with the dragon, because if you do, well, lights out. But don't worry, old K-Wing's got a trick that will help you guys in figuring out when he's going to call for help. He does this with an odd dance. No, I'm serious. He jumps from side to side, claps his wings together, and then roars. Great, so now that you know the ropes, it's time to say bye bye birdie. Alrighty then, the training wheels are coming off, but this fight you're gonna need a new skill before even tangling with this crazy sea lion. Combining items is a wonderful thing, and I'm shocked and appalled I forgot to mention it in my beginner's guide. My bad, so I'm gonna rectify my mistake right now. By now you should have collected lots of herbs, blue mushrooms, and honey on your journey. Don't get me wrong, potions are great and all, but these bigger baddies you're gonna need some serious medicine. 
See that combination menu? That is your key. Select the potion, then honey, and ta-da, you've just created a mega potion, and it's mega radical. Please carry at least 10 megas, 10 potions, 10 herbs, 10 blue mushrooms, and 10 honeys before accepting this quest. Because during the quest, you can combine items as you use up your potions, giving you a serious edge on your enemy, making this fight a lot easier because you have tons of potions on hand. Now we're ready for the main event. Man, oh man, this thing can give you some serious migraines. Unlike the previous foes, it's a lot harder to read this guy's moves. In fact, he has tons of attacks both on land and in the water. Rather than going into vast detail, I'm just going to cover some of the most common attacks. Attack number one. What he does is he shakes his head and does a killer barrel roll, which crushes the player. Attack number two. This is where it will charge you, wiggling its body or biting you. Unfortunately, this monster has the ability to combine moves, so his charge could turn into a deadly lunge, taking a bigger chunk out of your life at any time. And there's no real warning when he's going to do it. Or he will charge you and spit three or four water balls at you. Attack number three. The sea monster will stand on its hind legs and shoot a big ball of water at you. Keep in mind that he can also switch to a killer body slam at random, so there's no telling what he's going to do, literally, it's all a guessing game. Attack number 4, close combat. Okay, this is pretty annoying too. What he does is, again, a variation of moves. He brings his tail to his throat and then snaps his tail like a rubber band, creaming everyone in his wake. Or he'll have his tail swat people like flies, and he can attack you from left to right or from behind you. There's no way of knowing. Frankly, water combat puts the player at a serious disadvantage. If you don't have water armor with you, you wish you did. If you do, then I suggest you exit out of this quest and come back better equipped. You will need all the extra protection you can get just to survive this fight solo. Trust me, you do not want to fight this guy in the water. Personally, his attacks are a lot easier to read when they're underwater. But just because you know what's coming, all that means is you have enough time to brace for impact, because dodging is next to impossible. Like on the land, the beast will charge you, except this time he's lightning fast and knocks you back hard enough to daze you. This move also sets up an attack like a water somersault, which smacks you with his tail if he still has one. If not, then he just hits you with his head. It's not a pretty sight, trust me. To be honest, I didn't get to research most of his water attacks because, well, I didn't last long in the water. I found the best way to kill this monster is on land, though. It's a lot easier to cut off his tail or damage his mane when he's on land. Like all monsters, this one limps when really weak, and he'll try to escape to Zone 8 where he'll try to sleep, so then you can just follow him and kill him. Okay, so that concludes the bosses that most of you will face in the single player. Chatting with the different hunters online though, I found out that most of them did not complete the solo game at all, so this is as far as most of them got. Online is another story though. In our next video, due shortly I promise, we will be covering tougher monsters like the Baroth, the big fish thing, the dragon, and the mother of all bosses, this guy, whom I hate more than the Gigax. So keep it locked here for new Game Zone videos by me and other contributors all the time. Don't forget to hit up our home site for more awesome content you will not find anywhere else. This has been Luke from Game Zone. My catchphrase as always is God bless and happy gaming. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this ongoing series. Until we meet again, gamers. See ya.